Hello everyone. I have been waiting to talk about this because I wanted to see what was said first. There are a couple of major YouTube channels talking about the whole Micro Center blog thing. So um, I want to see what they said first before I said anything because generally speaking they do a much better job of explaining the situation than I do. I decided to wait and see what would happen and then make my comments after that. So out of all the videos that I've watched for uh, this particular situation, there's one thing that really surprised me that was not mentioned, and that's the power uh, spec line. You'll notice I have it up here on the computer, but um, there's a very good reason that I think power spec needs to be mentioned as part of the whole illusion that Micro Center might be clueless. And then after the power spec, I need to talk about one other topic, but we'll get into that in a bit later, but for right now, let me focus on this. So what is power spec? I think that's the question we're going to have to ask and answer uh, before we can really get into this discussion. Power spec is Micro Center's pre-built line. It's their in-house brand name, if you will. It's not the first company to do this. As a matter of fact, Newegg does it as well with their um, ABS line. There's actually a really good video from Gamers Nexus on it. I'll tab over real quickly so you can see it. I'll, of course, put it in the description, though. So there you go. There's the video. You can see uh, he's talking about the ABS Challenger. And in Newegg's case, they use um, parts that aren't selling um, from their warehouse to make these computers. I don't know what PowerSpec's deal is, but um, it's very clear that they use low-quality components. We'll get into that in a minute. Now, um, other than power spec existing, I haven't been able to find too much on it. As a matter of fact, the only mention of power spec that I could find, at least in the YouTube area, is going to be from Jay's Two Cents. I'll tab over for that. Jay's Two Cents back in 2020 uh, did a recording to review a power spec PC that was sent to him. This is actually how I was made aware of power spec. I had no clue they existed up until this video. Um, but yeah, so beyond what J Jay's Two Cents said in this video and what I could find on the internet, I'm not really seeing too much other than it's just the in-house brand. I don't know what PowerSpec does. Do they use parts that aren't selling or something? It would make sense if it's parts not selling, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But moving on. Let me go back to this page. So now that we, you've kind of got the gist of, well, at least I hope you got the gist of PowerSpec, uh, let's go ahead and talk about this, and this will lead into why I think that it's using um, parts that aren't selling. Okay, so you'll notice that there's two power specs up on the screen, and I think that these probably show off the best... Oh, I'm sorry, three. And they show off the best extremes with these builds. So, when it comes to AMD Ryzen, you want fast RAM. Um, ASRock posted it its own recommendations, which is a motherboard company, but there are also, you know, Linus Tech Tips, Jay's Two Cents, Hardware's Nexus, um, or Gamers Nexus, I'm sorry, uh, and a bunch of others that have talked about what they think are best RAM speeds for use with Ryzen. Um, my conclusion with everything I've read is that it's generally speaking best to use CL16 3000 megahertz. That's because if you look at a good portion of the B550 and X570 motherboards, for the most part, they um, are going to require overclock in order to get past 3000 megahertz. 3000 megahertz appears to be um, the speed that requires the least amount of tinkering. So uh, that's what I have gathered from all of it, and if I'm wrong, you can respectfully let me know in the comments, but assuming that I'm correct, then that's generally speaking the best speed to go for. But unfortunately, as you can see with, um, what is that, the G165 and uh, G509, they did not do that with their RAM. As a matter of fact, I've personally checked this, and I don't know if this is this, the same configuration for every single store, but the store that I have access to, I've noticed that they are using T-Force RAM, that is 266 megahertz uh, RAM. Uh, with CL18. So it's not even CL16, it's 18. 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of one problem there. Um, the other major issue that I have with the system is the motherboard that they use. It's an Aces B fifth. Uh, I'm sorry, Aces B five five zero MA, which is uh, a wireless capable motherboard. That's a bit on the cheap end for the wireless motherboards. It's a uh, retail price is somewhere around 130 to 150 USD. It depends on where you're buying it from and all that good stuff. But um, I think it was hardware unboxed. Uh, did it a yeah, I'm pretty sure it was hardware unboxed. They did a recording or a video to show off what they felt were the best B550 motherboards, and they said that the B550 MA was of low quality, and they just would avoid it at all costs if they can help it. So I am inclined to believe that, um, based on what I've seen between what they've said and what I've read through forums, reviews, and other things. So there's problematic part number two. Problematic part number three is the power supply. It's a Cooler Master MWE White 650 watt in the G509. Let me go and quickly tab over so you can see this. If you were to do just a Google search on Cooler Master White 650 watt review, you'll notice that there's really not that many um, reputable reviews on it. There's a bunch of names here that I just don't recognize. Um, you can see there's an Amazon news article. That's about the only thing that I really noticed, but it's not a review, it's just a news article. Um, but if you scroll down and if you really look, you'll find some other things. Let me do that. So you'll notice the new A customer review is only two stars. And I know customer reviews are not exactly the best thing to go by, but I just want to point out that it's two stars. Moving on. Okay, so as you can see, we've scrolled to the bottom, and we've only really found Reddit threads or forum posts regarding this. So let's go in and open those. I see I failed to pull up the Reddit thread, but that's fine. So let's see. Okay, yeah, so I don't think that that's correct. They're just saying it's decent, but let me move on. Oh, this is the wrong model, actually, because the Cooler Master White, uh, the one that's in the G509, it's actually not the semi-modular model. It's the, it's the non-modular model, so that one's actually incorrect anyways. But as you can see, there's very little in terms of mention of that particular power supply, which is very sketchy. Um, but I do know from looking up other power supplies from Cooler Master that uh, both Linus Tech Tips uh, as well as the uh, Tom's Hardware Forums uh, users all say to avoid Cooler Master power supplies. They are of low quality uh, in terms of the capacitor and some other components that are related to the power supply. So there's problem number three with the G509. So what does all these problems add up to? It adds to the illusion that Micro Center doesn't appear to know what they're doing. If they are selling brand names that are using components that are just not selling from their shelves, then like I can un sort of understand it, but at the same time, it's a reputation hit to take. Let me explain. If you were to ask people to move over to AMD right now, most people's response would be NVIDIA is just the way they would prefer to go. They've had a lot of issues in the past with AMD video cards, and it's left some mental scars, so to speak. There, there are a couple people that I've talked to that just simply cannot be convinced AMD has done better in the last four years because they've had a bad experience with the R29 D and Vega 56. My eyebrows raise a little bit when I hear that 
those were the cards that gave him those mental scars. But whatever, moving on. The point is, is that once you develop a product that just performs badly or does cause issues, then there's a good chance that people will hate on the company and or brand just because of that one incident. That's just how people work a lot of the time. Usually, the people that do this are people who aren't tech savvy, is what I've noticed. Other people's experience may be different, but that's what I've noticed. So, it's taking a risk in the fact that if a capacitor were to go out, because that seems to be the cheapest component within the Core Master White, um, you know, that's pretty bad because uh, it has a chance to cause damage to the entire system. And also, people aren't going to really be aware, for the most part, to, you know, look for that. You have to understand that a lot of people who buy brand names, I'm not saying all, but a lot, have limited knowledge or no knowledge at all when it comes to computer hardware. Um, you know, so that's why they buy brand names, is because they just want it simple and easy. But a power supply going out, that's not simple and easy. Right, and that's going to hurt your reputation if somebody has to bring back the computer to get that fixed. So um, I wouldn't take the risk on the Cooler Master. Um, why? And for that matter, all the other choices were pretty questionable. The ones I listed. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just it, it adds to the appearance that Micro Center doesn't know what they're doing. To further this, I can actually talk about some other things regarding Micro Center. From the past, of course, nothing recent, but um, a long time ago, I would say probably about 2015, 2016 time frame, Micro Center hosted an event at all their stores simultaneously. They invited Twitch streamers and YouTube personalities um, that were from the area where that store was, and they just hosted this big old hangout event with games and other stuff. Really cool event idea by the way I think that it's awesome that the that there was participation from the corporate side to get involved with the community side of things um, but unfortunately that was short-lived once the event was done Micro Center never did it again and for that matter never bothered to keep in contact with the streamers and YouTube personalities that were invited to these events I did try talking to corporate about it some time ago um, and I learned a couple of things about Micro Center's practice in that process I learned that in order to talk to corporate, you have to call their Columbus, Ohio store and ask for corporate. The corporate number is not listed, and there is no way to call them back. If they don't want to talk to you, you're out of luck because they're just going to tell the Columbus store to just tell you off. That's how they work. So, um, yeah, there's really no way to talk to corporate is what I'm getting at here. And uh, I think that um, because of this and their failure to upkeep their communications with the streamers and YouTubers from that time, uh, that it hurt them, not just from a business standpoint, but from uh, you know, a reputation standpoint as well. Um, because they're coming off as cold-shouldered and not really receptive of people wanting to work with them. So yes, there is that to consider as well. I don't know if Micro Center has gotten better about that since since those years, but from what I've seen with Micro Center stores, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if that were still the case. I have noticed in the years that I have made Micro Center runs and uh, you know helped people with you know purchasing PC parts and things of that nature, that there is a big disconnect between the corporate side of Micro Center and their stores. It would seem that there store managers or store workers are completely out of sync with corporate just by the way that they communicate and stuff um, when I was giving feedback on the G509 uh, actually within the last month or so uh, I had to email the person that sold the computer to that person I was helping because that sales rep was the only way that I could reach out with a feedback form saying hey uh, this is what I've noticed with the system. Unfortunately, that was just all I could do. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. Micro Center is, is a big old mess, and I don't think they're going to last long if they continue to either can, uh, keep business the way it is or um, 
if they sell these power spec PCs the way they are. I'll explain that a little bit too to kind of, I guess you can say, relay my concerns. Um, and, and as to why, you know, Micro Center really can't be taking too many more hits to their reputation or business. Micro Center has, I think, 25 stores in the United States. Somebody can quote me if I'm wrong on that, but I think it's 25. So that means the only people that can buy these power spec PCs, or for that matter, any of their parts, are people that live no, near those stores, which I can tell you is, is a hit or miss. There's, their stores are in just such bizarre places other than maybe Texas and New York. New York and Texas have reasonable locations. Uh, they're in places where people could easily access them, but other states, not, not so much. Um, so yeah, not only are they not accessible to most people, um, you know, they also have to deal with the fact that they're just not really doing anything other than being a computer store. Normally that would be fine, but the problem is you have to compete with Amazon, Newegg, and probably some others that I'm not thinking of right now. Competing with Amazon or Newegg is what caused some businesses to go out of business because people would prefer to online shop rather than go in person. And also because they're able to sell it at a cheaper rate usually than the stores, which is unfortunate. And um, we are going to continue losing businesses um, because of just Amazon and taking over. That's just the sad fact that's going to happen within the next, next couple of years. Um, so yeah, Micro Center has got to do something other than be a computer store or else they're risking their business. In my opinion, the best way that they could manage this is to actually work with streamers. Um, streamers are a great way to get the word out about something. Um, because they're usually a lot of streamers are good people. They have good communities. Um, you know, they support mental health or do something else in addition to being that good person. It's great to see, but um, yeah, so they're really good for that. So they either need to work with streamers or I think another thing they can do as well is work with the various brands in esports. Um, a lot of the esport events like DreamHack, they have companies come in um, to make these computers for that event, assuming that that needs to be the case. Um, I think that time is coming up pretty soon because um, CLX is the computer brand that made DreamHack's last round of computers, to my knowledge. I did see them at the most recent DreamHack before COVID happened. Um, but yeah, CLX does provide quality parts, but unfortunately, um, you know, these were all built, I don't know, maybe four years ago, somewhere around there, four or five. Um, I know this because I actually have seen the CLX computers and they all have their own number tags. I've seen the exact same number tags over and over again at multiple events. And it makes complete sense why you ditch a computer if it's continuing to work well for esports. So CLX is probably going to have to at some point either upgrade or just get new computers for the events. And if they can't do that, then that's a chance for Micro Center to swoop in and introduce their power spec lines. If they do that, though, they're going to have to completely change their building, um, not just with the hardware, um, but also with um, the case they're using and everything. Because right now they're using Lian Lee 215s. Uh, they're custom ordered with the PowerSpec logo engraved on them. Um, I think three or four models of the PowerSpec line use the MATX version of the 215. And they are so small. It wouldn't normally be an issue, but it's just where the things are placed in the case. The, I guess, hard drive bay is actually placed at the top of the case right in front of the power supply. So the power supply, I think, can't be any longer than 145 millimeters, which is a really odd measurement if I'm right. Um, because most of your ATX power supplies, like the Antec Earthwatts uh, Gold, um, Seasonic Power Focus, I think is its name, those are all 150 millimeter power supplies. So that means you'd have to find something smaller than 150 millimeters to fit there. If the, the hard drive cage can be removed, I think that probably would help the situation. But um, it goes to show that um, it's an issue uh, not just with the case looks, but also with the case itself. Um, you know, it's, it's limiting upgradability. But yeah, I can keep going on and on about this whole, whole situation, but 
what I'm trying to say here is that there's a lot of issues uh, in terms of Micro Center, not just with the power spec line, but also with their corporate side and just the way they th handle things. I think they honestly need to get things turned around immediately because once the shortage ends, I really don't think that they're going to be doing so hot. Right now, these power spec lines are only selling because of their uh, RTX 3060s or 70s. That's the bottom line. Anyways, thanks for listening.